Hello, hello. Hello, how is everyone doing today? It is Friday, finally, guys. Good evening, teacher. Hi, good evening, Martha. Teacher. Good evening. Good evening, Nubia. Hello, Benny. Lucrecia. Hello, teacher. Monica. Good evening, Benny. All right. Thank you so much for joining today. Say que we don't usually have classes on Friday. We had the reminder of the class uh, by Elena. And then we had class today, right? And today we are going to be reviewing the midterm test. Para que estemos ready and prepared to do mm -hmm. the midterm test. It is super important that you are working on the platform y que you can work on the platform during this weekend. Lo ideal sería que estuviera terminado el midterm test, o sea, todo terminado hasta el midterm test by Monday. Para que ya la next week estén trabajando on section four and five we are working on um, on the class, right? So thank you so much for joining today. We are going to review, um, well, to finish reviewing directions and how to provide directions for someone else. Y después vamos a hacer el review del midterm test. Yes, les parece? Sound good? Okay. Yes? No? Yes. Yes, teacher. Awesome. Yes, teacher. Perfect. Love that. Love to hear that. Let's see. I see Nestor. Ale just joined. Perfect. We are eight people right now. Let's just wait for one more minute before we go ahead and begin. So before we begin, guys, let me go ahead and let's review our calendar, right? Let's see how we are doing with the calendar. So today, vamos a terminar de ver directions and conversation and what? Okay, directions and conversation, and we're going to review the midterm test. Y ese sería the middle of the module. Ahí llegamos a la mitad del módulo. And then, then, on Monday, we're going to begin reviewing the simple past and the vocabulary the different pronunciations of the past, of ED at the past, and how to make questions. We're going to review some vocabulary about summer activities and the past of the verb to be, questions with the verb to be in the past, and then questions with did, with was, and where. Was and where son los pasados del verb to be, right? Vamos a ver más vocabulary. And finally, in exactly two weeks, vamos a hacer el final test. Y vamos a hacer un review de todo el module. So, but that will be next week, guys. So, starting right now, let me go ahead and share my screen. Do you remember que leímos este reading ayer? Yeah. Yes, teacher. Awesome. Perfect. And we were seeing that um, the woman was providing directions for the tourist, right? El turista necesitaba saber cómo llegar a diferentes lugares. So this woman was helping the tourist get to Rockefeller Center, get to the Empire, the Empire State, get to St. Patrick's cathedral he um, the woman told him that he had to walk up 
Fifth Avenue to 50th Street. Y que ahí va a estar St. Patrick's. So, let's review some vocabulary about how you can um, provide directions for someone. ¿Cómo le podemos dar direcciones a alguien o instrucciones? How you can provide directions, right? So we have different um, expressions. Let's read them. Can I please have Benny read the first one? Perdón, teacher. Hi, Benny. Can you read this sentence, this question? Okay. How do you get to Rockefeller Center? Thank you so much, Benny. And you could answer with, let's read this one, Marta. Okay. Walk up Fifth Avenue, Third Avenue, perdón. Thank you, Marta. Let's read the next one, Nubia. Door let on um, for, for, for night street. Excellent. Yes, 49th. Perfect. And let's read the last one, Lucrecia. It is on the right. Perfect. Thank you. So the question was, how do I get to Rockefeller Center? ¿Cómo llego al Rockefeller Center? Las instrucciones son, walk up o go up Fifth Avenue. Caminemos o subamos la quinta avenida, right? Walk up or go up Fifth Avenue. Then turn left, no, turn left on 49th Street, and it's on the right. Al cruzar a la izquierda en uh, 49th Street, estará a la derecha, right? Let's see another example. Can I please have Rita read this one? How can I get to Bryant Park? Thank you, Rita. Let's read this one, Nestor. Well done, or go down, First Avenue. Thank you, Nestor. And let's read the next one, Veronica. To write uh, on for two screens. 42nd, recordemos, 42nd, SND, second de los ordinales. No problem. Solo recordemos, 42nd, perfect. And let's finish, Ale. It on the left. Thank you. The question was, how can I get to Bryant Park? Esta persona quería llegar a Bryant Park. In the instructions, we had three, three instructions. Walk down or go down. Al contrario de walk up or go up, obviously, obviously. Walk down or go down. Bajemos la avenida, right? Walk down uh, Fifth Avenue. Turn right on 42nd Street. Crucemos a la derecha on 42nd Street. And it's on the left. Estará a la izquierda, right? Excellent. So, let's review, guys. Cuando decimos a alguien que suba sobre una calle, go up, uh, it, it could be any road, right? It could be go up on main road. Mm -mm -mm. Vamos a usar up, que porque tenemos que subir una calle o hay que bajar una calle. So, we're Walk down or go down, right? Let's walk down or go down. Si vamos a cruzar, we have to turn left or right. Turn left or right. 
y vamos a decir a la persona dónde está. Le podríamos decir, it's on the right, está a la derecha, it's on the left, está a la izquierda, it's right in front, o it's right up front. Esa sería otra opción. No está a la derecha ni a la izquierda, sino que enfrente. It's right up front. O oh, it's up front. Solo it's up front. También le podríamos decir um, that que tiene que caminar tres cuadras a partir de ahí. For example, get to 49th Street and walk two, let's see, two blocks down. Y blocks son las cuadras, right? Walk two blocks down. Peter, in, yes? and if I I say go straight ahead, is mm -hmm. that's correct. Right. Go straight ahead. Go straight ahead. Excellent. Sí, le podríamos decir. Okay, so you get um get to uh, the 42nd Avenue and walk straight ahead for, for poner un ejemplo, right? Podríamos dejarlo solo hasta ahí, pero podríamos decirle and walk straight ahead. Uy, I'm sorry. And walk straight ahead for two blocks and the library, for example, will be on the right. Yeah? Correcto, Marlene. Excellent. Walk straight ahead. Perfect. Esas son algunas de las expresiones que podemos usar to give instructions or directions. Se comprende, guys? Do you have any questions? Or do you want to know how to say something que no esté aquí? ¿Quieren saber cómo decir algo que no esté aquí? Yes, no, no, all clear. Is it clear? Is it not clear? Do you have questions? Do you not have questions? It's clear. Excellent. What about the rest? ¿Qué dicen los demás? Is it clear? clear? Perfect. All right. Very well. In that case, if everything's clear, then we may go ahead and review the midterm test. Okay? Porque this was our last, um, our last content of section three. But we also have the pronunciation of compound nouns. Uh, que quienes ya están trabajando en la section three, ya lo vieron. This is a very easy topic. This is just pronunciation. And let's just review this very quickly. Esto solo es los compound nouns. ¿Cuáles son los compound nouns? Los nombres de cosas o personas que son dos palabras, right? For example, post office, la oficina postal, igual que en español. Los sujetos um, ay, tienen un nombre en español. But, sí. Cartero. Correct, post oh, office. O la oficina, o el correo. Es la, es la oficina de correos, correct. El correo. The post office. Mm -hmm. Yes. The post office. El uh, cartero es the mailman post, or the postman. Postman. Yeah, postman or mailman. Excellent. Esos son los compound nouns, los nouns que son dos palabras. Postman es otro ejemplo. A gas station, restroom, coffee shop. Y la pronunciación se debe a que Lo debemos decir de corrido, right? Post office, gas station, restroom, coffee shop. Debemos evitar decir post office, gas station, restroom, coffee shop, drug store, supermarket, 
bookstore, department store, sino que debemos hacerlo fluido, porque al final es una palabra, una sola, una sola idea, pero solo que son dos palabras, post office, gas station, ahí se unen las dos S, gas station, restroom, coffee shop, drugstore, supermarket, bookstore, department store, right? Pero that's the main idea con esto, que hagamos las palabras de corrido es en estos compound nouns, right? No significa que las comas o los puntos en una oración nos la vamos a saltar, sino que es una manera de sonar más um, nativo, right? Pero eso es todo lo de compound nouns. Hoy sí. Let's review the midterm test, guys. Now, before we begin, quiero saber, how are you doing with the platform, guys? ¿Cómo van con la platform? Con los knowledge, uh, yeah, con los knowledge checks, o en qué section van? I want to hear you. ¿En qué section van de la platform? Section two, teacher. Excellent. Thank you, Nestor. What about the rest? Section two. Excellent. Thank you, Lucrecia. Section two. Section two. Perfect. All right. I think uh, most of you are in section two, right? No problem. Let's try to go ahead and work on section two as much as we can. E intentemos trabajar todo lo que podamos en la section three. Para ya la otra semana estar trabajando en section four. All right. So, guys. As usual, este no es. As usual, our midterm test, midterm test or midterm exam consists of five sections. The listening, matching the questions with the answers, selecting questions, completing the conversations and reading articles, right? So, Let's go ahead and start by doing the listening. Compound nouns, places and things, prepositions of place, directions, son algunas cosas que hemos visto en la section three. Oops. All right. So we're going to begin by doing the listening. And for this listening, we only have three questions. Solo tenemos tres preguntas, just three questions. Mark is going to be, what age? E, they're going to have a party on what day? They're going to, what are they going to do at the party? So let's go ahead and listen, guys. One. Are you going to do anything special this weekend, Julie? Well, it's Mark's birthday. Oh, great. How old is he going to be? He's going to be 13. 13? He's growing up. Yes. He's going to go to high school next year. Two. So, what are you going to do for his birthday? We're going to have a party for him. Terrific. When are you going to have it? Well, his birthday is on Friday, but we're going to have the party on the weekend. On Saturday or Sunday? On Saturday. Everybody can come that day. Three. What kind of party are you going to have? Oh, well, we're going to have a karaoke party. A what? You know, karaoke. People stand up and sing songs. The music is on a CD and the words are on television. I see. So Mark likes karaoke? He loves it. Excellent, guys. All right. So when you are doing the midterm test on the platform, ustedes pueden escuchar this listening as many times as you need. Tantas veces como sea necesaria, right? As many times as you need. But let's go ahead and review it right now. 
What age is Mark going to be? 13 years old. Excellent. It's going to be 13 years old. 13. 13. Perfect. And when are they having the party? Saturday. Why? Saturday. Yeah, on Saturday, but why? Why why is it on Saturday? Why did she say that it was on Saturday? All right, let's go ahead and listen once again. One. Are you going to do anything special this weekend, Julie? Well, it's Mark's birthday. Oh, great. How old is he going to be? He's going to be 13. 13? He's growing up. Yes, he's going to go to high school next year. Two. So what are you going to do for his birthday? We're going to have a party for him. Terrific. When are you going to have it? Well, his birthday is on Friday, but we're going to have the party on the weekend. On Saturday or Sunday? On Saturday. Everybody can come that day. Three. Why is it on Saturday? Correct. It is on Saturday, but why it is on why is it on Saturday? Because every every mm -hmm. all every can do can go. <laughs> Correct, because everyone can go. Es correcto. La están haciendo el sábado because everyone can go, right? Yes. All right. No solo busquemos las respuestas, sino que entendamos de qué están hablando, right? Está poniendo Alejandra que tiene problemas. Mm, el... Veamos. Let's see. WhatsApp. Let's see, veamos, veamos. Ale, tengo problemas con el internet. Con el internet. Ay, ok. Thank you for letting me know. Gracias, Nestor, for letting me know as well. Okay. So, um, and what are they going to do at the party? Mm. They, uh, they want sing song. They want karaoke. Mm -hmm. They're 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 going to be doing karaoke, right? So what is that? Dancing, singing songs, or watching television? Sing song. Correct. So karaoke is singing songs, right? Excellent, guys. All right. And that is the first section of the midterm test. Easy, right? All right. Now, let's go ahead and match the questions with the answers. Now, aquí tenemos las instructions. Match the questions with the answers. Okay. En esta question hay un error. Right? En esta question hay un error. ¿Quién me puede decir cuál es el error? And you're going to be pro. What's the mistake in that sentence? ¿Cuál es el error en esa pregunta? Sing me out. Maybe this. What? This, Are we going this, to work this? this? Correct. ¿Cómo tendría que ser? This tendría que ser T A I S. Correct. Excellent. T H I S. This. ¿Por qué este this? Para que lo usamos, este T H E S E. Plural. Correct. Excellent. Perfect. 
Awesome. Awesome, guys. I'm so proud. Yes, tendría que ser this. Y, um, y porque this es para plurales, right? Excellent. So, ¿cómo vamos a match the questions with the answers, right? Esto sí no se las voy a resolver todas. But let's do this one, okay? You only have six exercises. So let's do one para que comprendamos how to do it. So, are we going to work this weekend? Are we, we, y si con el pronoun que me están preguntando, con ese pronoun voy a contestar, a menos que sea you, right? Are you going to? Obviamente es a me, right? Yes, I am, right? Entonces, are we going to work this weekend? Sí. Sí. No. Correct. No, we are not. No, we are not. We are going to relax. To relax. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Y esa es la manera en la que lo vamos a hacer. We're going to focus on the pronoun that we are using. Con este pronoun nos preguntaron. Con el pronoun correspondiente respondemos. Right? Mm -hmm. We have only six exercises. Tenemos también our Pam and Andrew. ¿Quiénes son Pam and Andrew? Son we, they, she. They. They. Correct. Pam and Andrew. Ellos, right? Excellent, guys. Y si yo les digo, um, si yo les digo Nubia, is that he, she, they? She. she. Correct. She. And if I'm talking about my dog, it, 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 it. perfect, it. excellent, love that, awesome. Let's review section C, shall we? Section C says, select WH questions to complete the conversations. Vamos a select WH questions. And for this, we only have four exercises. Just four exercises, guys. Solo cuatro. All right? So, the answer is, next summer, we're going to Alaska. ¿Cuál sería la pregunta? Si yo estoy contestando, we're going to Alaska, ¿qué le tuve que haber preguntado? How are you going to get there? Where are we going to the next summer? Excellent. That is correct. Where are you going to go next summer? Y aquí me está contestando, we're going to go to Alaska. ¿Por qué? Porque yo le pregunté, where are you going to go? Excellent, guys. And that is the way that we are going to solve section C. Según la respuesta, entonces nosotros tenemos que hacer que tenga lógica the question that we are asking, right? Excellent. All right. Now for section D, tenemos drop downs. Estos menús se llaman drop down menus. And they provide us with three, um, three options, three words that we can choose from. And what we have to do is complete in the blanks, the sentences and complete the conversations. Para esto debemos saber um, the expressions, las expresiones, and if we have to say take, um, feel, what, etc. Right? Y que tenga sentido. Right? For example, I am Excellent. You have a headache. You don't feel a headache. You have a headache. Why? How? How? Mm -hmm. But why? What, what is a headache? Is it a noun or is it an adjective? No. 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 Correct. It's a noun. And with nouns, do we use have or feel? Have. Have. 
Correct. And what do we use with adjectives? Feel. Feel. Correct. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why. Esa es la razón por qué es I have a headache. Excellent, guys. And that is the way we are going to be completing this. I have a backache. Me duele la espalda. Estamos diciendo don't. Don't relax. Don't rest. Or don't exercise. What do you think? Exercise. Exercise. Correct. Porque le estamos diciendo don't do that, right? Don't do that. Don't exercise if your back hurts. Perfect. Let's review the next section, guys. In the last section. For the last section, we have an article that we have to read and then we have to answer some questions. We have just four questions. One for insomnia, one for a headache, one for a cold, and one for a cough. What is insomnia, guys? All right, so the reading is about home remedies, right? Not medications, but things you can take at home to feel better. So let's see. Can I please have Jennifer read a cold? A cold. What can you do for a cold? Many people eat hot chicken soup. Other people drink hot water with red paper, sugar, lemon juice, and milk. Excellent, Jennifer. Thank you so much. That's what you can do for a cold. And what can you do for a cough? Lucrecia? Do you have a bad cold? Drink water tea or take some honey. This can make your truth feel better. Better, correct. Thank you, Lucrecia. That's what you can do for a cough. Uh, you can drink warm tea or take some honey. This can make your throat feel better. Perfect. And what can you do for a headache, Nestor? Hello? I'm sorry, uh, repeat. <laughs> of course. What can you do for a headache? Can you read the headache part? A headache? <laughs> a headache? This one right here. Can you read? Uh, a headache? Um, yes. Que, que lea. Mm -hmm. Permítame que lo tengo bien pequeño, no lo veo. Um, a headache? Uh, what about a headache? Put a cold cloth on your hands. On the splat you first with cold water, you can also put your hands in hot water. This can help. Thank you, Nestor. That's what you can do for a headache. You can put a cold cloth on your head or spra splash your face with cold water. You can also put your hands in hot water. This can help. And what can you do for insomnia, Rocio? Hello? What happened? Rocio? No problem. What can you do for insomnia, Marlene? 
Oh, okay. Can't sleep at night, drink a large glass of warm milk, or take a very warm bath. Thank you very much, Marvin. Yes. Can't sleep at night, drink a large gl glass of milk, of warm milk, or take a very warm bath. Now, guys, hay alguna palabra de estos home remedies, de este reading, that you don't know? ¿Hay alguna palabra que no conozcan? Is there any word that you don't know? En a coat, eh, throat. Throat. Okay. Does Garganta. anyone know what a throat is? Garganta. Correct. Throat, garganta. Perfect. What else, guys? Throat, garganta. What else, guys? Is there another word that you don't know? Uh, um, so put a cloth, cold cloth, cloth. Excellent, yes. A cold cloth. Alguien sabe que es cloth? Como tela o algo mm -hmm. para... Como un trapito, right? Como un trapito. Put a cold cloth, ponerse una manta o una, un trapito um, helado en la frente. To calm down the headache. Eso es un cloth. Un pedazo de tela o una manta o una, um, un trapito, right? That's a cloth. Perfect. Yeah. Of course. All right. Very well. Now. Let's go ahead and review. Oops. Here we go. So what you're going to do for each of these, since you have one of each, uno de cada uno, one of each, you're going to choose what's best to do, for example, for a cold, and you're going to refer to the reading, right? Vamos a tomar de referencia el reading. So for a cold, you can drink a large glass of milk. Some people eat hot chicken soup. You can put a cold cloth on your head, or you can drink warm tea or take some honey. Yes. Really? You can do that for a cold yes. or for a cough, según el reading. Some people eat hot chicken soup. Some people eat hot chicken soup. That's correct. Some Según el rating, hot for a cold. Hot. Correct. Aquí nos lo dice. Many people eat hot chicken soup. Según el rating, mm. for a cold. Mm. Y nos dice que para un cough, we, you can drink warm tea or take some honey. Claro, uh, para mí también tiene sentido que you can drink warm tea or take some honey for a cold, pero como estamos respondiendo según lo que dice el reading, entonces así es la manera en la que lo debemos responder, right? What would head help for a headache? Putting a cold cloth on your head or drinking a large glass of milk? ¿Qué ayudaría, guys, for a headache? Putting a cold cloth on your head or drinking a large glass of milk? Your head. Correct. Putting a cold cloth on your head. Correct. Excellent. And that is the way that we are going to be doing that, right? Esa es la manera en la que vamos a estar haciendo el midterm test. ¿Alguien tiene alguna pregunta sobre algún exercise del midterm test? No. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. What about the rest? No questions. No questions. No questions. No questions. Excellent. Easy, right? Easy. All right. So allow me to tell you. In the next section, vamos a ver some vocabulary, some past 
uh, we're going to begin looking at the past, right? And we're going to see that there are many different pronunciations of the ED uh, verbs in the past. For example, que era lo que veíamos al principio. For example, if you're talking about baked, esto suena como una T at the end. Baked, baked, baked. Tenemos verbs in the past that studied, que suenan como una D. Studied, studied. Y tenemos verbs that you can listen to the ED sound. Que podemos escuchar el sonido de ED. For example, um, rewarded. Rewarded. Escuchamos el ED. Rewarded. Ed. Rewarded. Studied. Como, suena como una D. Y baked. Como una T. Baked. Studied. Rewarded. Right? Now, yo quisiera poderles decir estos verbos son así, estos verbos son así, estos verbos son así. But there is really no um, trick on how to know that. Solo lo vamos a poder hacer practicing and reading and listening. That is the only way to learn those types of verbs. De los, la pronunciation de los verbs in the past. Right? Vamos a estar viendo eso. We're also going to be looking at irregular verbs. ¿Alguien sabe cuáles son los irregular verbs? Do you know what irregular verbs are, guys? ¿Alguien sabe qué son los irregular verbs? Yes, no. De una manera en presente y de otra forma en pasado. Correct, correcto, Marta, correct. ¿Cuál sería un ejemplo, guys? The only regular verb. Go, when. También, um, go, comprar, ¿verdad, teacher? Buy, buy. Bought. Bought, correct. What else? ¿Qué otro sería un ejemplo? Mm. Come. Come. Came. Excellent. Eat. Eat, eat ate. Perfect. Eat ate. Estos son los irregular verbs. The ones that we don't just add ed at the end. No solo le agregamos ed al final. We don't just add ed at the end. But we actually change the verb completely, right? Estos son los irregular verbs. También vamos a estar viendo cómo hacer el pasado con estos verbs. We're also going to review how to do um, yes or no questions and some vocabulary. And we're going to review this next week, como les mostraba en el... Um, in the calendar, right? All right, guys. So right now, what we're going to do in estos últimos 15 minutes que tenemos, we're just going to practice, right? We're going to be practicing some prepositions of place, some many things. We're going to do different groups and be doing different exercises, okay? So, we're going to go ahead and make groups. Y yo voy a ir a cada uno de sus groups y les voy a dar some exercises. All right? Okay. So, we're going to do four groups of three participants each. So, let's go ahead and click on join breakable room.
Hello, Marlene. Let's, there we go. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Hello, guys. How are you? Hello, teacher. Hello, teacher. Hi, teacher. How are you guys doing, guys? How are you doing? All right, guys. So, you are going to be practicing have a plus noun and feel plus adjective. Y para hacer eso, I'm going to give you this image. Let's see, where is it? Mm -mm -mm. There you go. Aquí les he enviado la image en el chat. If you can please download it. And what we're going to be doing Se los voy a compartir también. Let's see. Aquí en mi pantalla. And we're going to be doing a conversation. So you are three people. Ustedes son tres personas. So what we're going to be doing is uh, two people are going to give advice. Una persona va a estar diciendo que they feel sick or because they have something, right? Y vamos a practicar have and um, feel, right? Vamos a hacer esa conversation, ustedes van a escribir and then we're going to review it. Two people are going to give advice to the person that is sick. Una persona va a estar sick y las otras dos personas le van a dar advice on what they, on what he or she can do about that situation, okay? So eso es lo que haríamos. Is it clear? Awesome. Cool. Be right back. Hello. How are you guys doing? Hello, teacher. <laughs> How are you guys? I thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Love to hear that. All right, guys. So you are going to be doing an exercise using um, have plus noun and feel plus adjective with this image. Se los voy a postrar. Y también se los voy a poner en el chat para que ustedes la descarguen y la tengan. What you're going to be doing, ya que son tres personas, is that uh, one person's going to be sick, una persona va a estar enferma, and the other two people are going to give advice on what this, the sick person can do to feel better. Y vamos a hacer una conversation, and then I am going to be reviewing that conversation, all right? And that will be on Monday, ¿les parece? Okay. Excellent. All right. So get to it, guys. We just have a few more minutes. See you soon. Hello. How are you guys doing? 
Hi. Hello, guys. All right. So, you are going to be doing a conversation. Vamos a hacer una conversation. You're going to be writing it down. Ya que son, estamos tres personas, three people. So, one person is going to be sick. And two people are going to give advice on what the sick person can do. Entonces, vamos a ir escribiendo esa conversation. Una persona va a estar enferma and the other two are going to give advice. Y vamos a practicar have a plus noun. I have a headache. I have, a, I have the cold. I have the flu. Y vamos a practicar feel plus adjective. I feel sick. feel awful. ¿Qué es lo que va a decir la persona que está sick? Right? And then we're going to be reviewing the um, conversation. Okay? También les voy a mandar esta image en el chat so that you have it de referencia. Okay. Yes? Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much, guys. I'll be right back. Hi, sorry. Hello. Hello, Hello Ale. Ale. How are you? Fine, fine. Fine. Aquí esperando. Love to hear that. So, what we're going to be doing, guys, is you're going to be doing a conversation. Vamos a estar escribiendo una conversation to practice have plus noun and feel plus adjective. Y también how to give advice when someone is sick. So, for example, um, one of you is going to be sick and one of you is going to give advice. Para practicar have plus noun and feel plus adjective. Feel sick, I feel uh, tired, I have a headache, I have a cold. Y la otra persona le va a provide advice. Okay, what you can do for the cold is this and this and this, right? También les voy a mandar aquí en el chat de Zoom, esta imagen para que ustedes la tengan de reference. Mm -hmm. Ok. All right. Y eso es lo que vamos a hacer en estos últimos minutos, guys, to practice. Ok. Ok, ok. Excellent, guys. Thank you so much. Be right back. Hello, hello. Hello, hello teacher. How are you guys doing? ¿Qué pasó? ¿Es someone missing from this room? Sí, no podemos abrir el archivo, teacher. Ay, no problem. A ver, ahorita se los vuelvo a enviar. Gracias. Of course. ¿Pero sí se comprende el exercise? Sí. Excellent. Ok, I just sent it to you. Aquí está, once again. Hoy sí. Perfect. Sí, hoy sí, ya. Gracias. Awesome, no problem. All right, guys. Get to work. And ya solo nos quedan cinco minutos. So let's just practice all we can, okay? Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. Teacher. Yes. Um, en este caso lo vamos a leer todo, ¿verdad? Sí, o sea, ustedes van a hacer un escenario, van a hacer un escenario. Una persona va a estar enferma and one person is going to give advice. La otra persona le va a dar consejo de qué puede hacer. Para que practiquemos have a plus noun and feel plus adjective. La persona que está enferma, I have a headache, have a cold, have a stomachache, I feel sick, I feel tired, I feel nauseous. Y la otra persona le va a dar advice. Uh, okay, so if you have a stomachache, what you can do is you can do this and this and this to feel better. Le va a dar el consejo de cómo sentirse mejor. Y vamos a hacer, a montar una conversation. Utilizando todas la, las frases que aparecen ahí. 
No, no necesariamente todas. Yo se las mandé como a referencia para que ocupen las que les vayan bien para su conversation. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Let's go ahead and practice all we can. Time? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's all. Do you believe that I need to see to the doctor? Uh, yes. Yes. I uh, sometimes I go to the doctor. When I feel, uh, when I feel sick. Or uh, when I, when I have a cold or, or when I have a coat, I take a home medicine or home rem, rem, remedy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> For example, tea, uh, um, lem, uh, lemon tea. Mm -hmm. Lemon tea. Ah, I feel terri terrible, great. I feel great, I feel good. Como son todos los adjetivos. Sí. Uh -huh. Me imagino sí. que así es. How do you feel? Pongámosle ahí. I feel. Sí, I, I feel, feel uh, I, uh, sad. Ponemos así, I feel, I feel eh, happy. Yeah. I feel happy. Sí. Mm -hmm. I feel happy. Porque no dijo que hiciéramos con todos los adjetivos que están ahí, ¿verdad? Eh, no. ¿Cuántos tenemos que hacer, Ale? Hello. Pueden Hello. ocupar solo Hello. los que sean necessary para su conversation. No tienen que ocuparlos todos. Ah, ok. No problem. Pero ahorita sí ya nos vamos back to the main room porque ya se ah. nos acabó el tiempo. Okay, ok, ok. Let's go back to the main room. Hello, hello. All right, guys. So we ran out of time, but ya hicimos el review de su midterm test. So you are ready to go ahead and work on the platform and do your midterm test, guys. Y sacaste 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. And be ready. And if you have any questions, you can text in the group chat and WhatsApp during the weekend. Intentemos trabajar hasta el midterm during this weekend and that would be all for today guys see you on monday okay there see you, you good night bye good night, guys good night. Good night.